Country and today I'm excited to bring you along for another canning video oh my gosh so I've got this big this is my salad spinner but this is full of tomatoes from my garden and my daughter's garden she texted me and said I'm going out of town uh, can you go over and pick tomatoes and peppers she didn't have too many peppers to pick yet but the tomatoes she did have quite a few so um, I added those to my tomatoes now I'm, I've got a sheet pan full of tomatoes I've already doused them with olive oil I've got um, onions on this platter uh, three to, uh, six small jalapenos um, some bulbs whole bulbs of garlic that I like to roast so I'm gonna roast these in the oven I'm also going to be adding celery and a poblano pepper so um, the recipe in the ball canning book calls for celery onion um, green bell pepper but I don't I don't really want that green bell pepper flavor in here to me it's a little strong I'd rather have a little heat and warmth to it and poblano peppers are just absolutely delicious so that being said and I'm gonna fire roast those on the burner get them in a bag so I can get that skin off of there but oh, it's gonna be so good in the sauce so we're gonna do this and it will turn into very much like a uh, sauce you can use this for Mexican cuisine as well as Italian so I'm just not gonna put any basil or Italian herbs in there we're gonna stick to the basics of a stewed tomato so right now I need to add kosher salt to my tomatoes oh my gosh they are so beautiful and red and juicy and bursting bursting now this other bowl I'm not gonna roast most of them are the you know the grape size I'm gonna leave um, I'll cut those in half the really small cherry tomatoes I will leave whole in the sauce and um, I just don't see a need to uh, roast them all we'll still get that fire roasted flavor uh, from the other vegetables so all right guys come on in and I'll show you what I got going on all right so as you can see I've got my tomatoes I've got these little peppers here are from my garden as well I think I'm gonna go pick a couple more of those because I really do want some peppers um, in this sauce more pepper so when I go to pick the poblano I'll go ahead and pick those but these are gonna go in the oven and they're actually gonna roast right about an hour you leave all the juice and oil the olive oil that's on here goes right in your pot all right I'll be back when we're putting it in the 12 quart stock pot So I have my uh, pepper, my t the tomatoes that I didn't roast yet. I've got celery, and this was uh, six stalks of celery. And so about two cups. I'm doing what I think is going to be a double recipe according to the ball canning book. So, ooh, isn't that going to be pretty? Uh, it's going to be really, really nice. Now. Some of these tomatoes are gonna be big and chunky, and that's okay because it's a stewed tomato base. So again, you're gonna be able to use this in all kinds of things. So um, let's see how the tomatoes are going in the oven. Ooh, that's gonna be good. They're almost ready. So I'm almost ready, and by the time I fill this, 
it will be a full pot. Now I do have um, about a quart and a half of chicken stock or chicken bone broth in here and um, it's just going to help flavor the sauce so or the stewed tomatoes if you will. All right and if I need to thicken it later I can always use Thrive's tomato powder. Mmm yum. Okay so my roasted tomatoes are done and the olive oil and the juice from the tomatoes all of this is going in the pot. So you know how I love to have anything roasted in oven roasted, fire roasted out on the grill. Any way you do this it's delicious and these tomatoes are going to break down so I'm going to get the majority off this tray and when it's cool enough that I can pour the rest in there. You can see there's a lot of juice. Now if I get enough, and I think I will, get enough tomatoes to do another uh, tomato recipe for you, I, I don't know, I think it's gonna be fire roasted out on the grill if I am able to, you know, take some time. Um, okay guys, so my pot is almost full. Now, I'm gonna tell you that I added, oh, okay, so I've got a plate here with some skins on it and so when I see a skin that looks like it's thicker um, and it's gonna cause issues I pull them off I pulled a lot of them off after they come out of that broiler or you know your oven a lot of them they just slip right off so I'm not I have tomatoes in my salad with skin I'm not opposed to having the skin but if I do see like one that looks thicker I'll go ahead and take it off so uh, I'll fish it out while this is cooking down. So I've got my celery, my peppers, and now it's time for the roasted, um, the roasted garlic. Two bulbs of roasted garlic. I squeeze that out. The jalapenos, which are not hot at all, and the red uh, sweet heat peppers from my garden and the onions. Yum. So that's all going in, and it's all just got a rough chop after it came off the sheet tray. So down into the pot it goes and that'll be the end of the ingredients and I'm hoping that I get um, I'm hoping that I get seven quarts but uh, I think I might I might it might be another six quart batch but that's okay oh oh it smells amazing absolutely so the, see, this is what I'm saying. So here's a big piece of skin that can come out. So as I stir and play with it and loosen all the skins, I still have texture in here, but I can get all those skins that I don't want out of there. And I didn't have to blanch them and do all that hassle. It really, honestly, now if I was gonna puree it, I wouldn't even worry about this. Um, but beans that I'm keeping it kind of rustic. I'm gonna, you know, I'll pull these thicker skins out because I don't need them in there. Mm. Now, if I turn this into soup, I will puree, uh, most likely puree it. And l what little bit of skin is left in there will not matter to me. All right, so this is gonna simmer on the stove for another uh, half hour till all the veg are pretty tender and then it's going in the pot. And tomatoes are the one vegetable or fruit that it's better for you the longer they cook. So, all right guys, I'll be back when we're loading jars. All right, we are ready to start jarring up our uh, stewed tomatoes. So, I have cooked this down, I've removed as many skins as I want to, and now I'm going to make a mess. <laughs> Anyway, I'm gonna start loading my jars, and this is absolutely beautiful. The little cherry tomatoes are gonna stay whole um, for the most part, so that's very, it's a very rustic um, sauce or soup or whatever you're gonna turn it into. Um, the stewed vegetables are awesome. Now, because I added a little bit more onion and different peppers than a bell pepper in a, a different amount and more celery than the recipe called for. I am actually going to up the time. 
Um, the Volcano Book for the Stewed Tomatoes and Vegetables calls for, look how pretty that is. Look at that, and it's hot. You want one inch of headspace. Um, it calls for 20 minutes for quarts. And I just don't feel like that's enough time. It also calls for you to add lemon juice. I do not want lemon juice in this. Um, I don't want to change the flavor. The it's because it's delicious, just the way it is. So um, I'm going to up the time to 40 minutes because of the low acid ingredients in here, and then I know it's safe. So um, 40 minutes, and that's going by. If you do just tomatoes and celery with no citric acid or lemon juice, it's 30 minutes. Or, yeah. And if you do, um, you know, anything with larger amounts of onions, it's usually in the 40 minute range. So I'm just going to be on the safe side. I've done the, the longer cooks with tomatoes and they absolutely come out beautiful. So this is what's going to happen. It's going under 10 pounds of pressure into the pressure canner that is about 180 degrees and we're going to load up the rest of our jars so I will speed this up so you don't have to sit here too long. Okay, so I'm doing the last jar and I wanted to tell you, I, I told you wrong earlier. I said that if you can tomatoes and celery together, it's 30 minutes and I was wrong. For quarts, it's 35 minutes. Um, so because of the onion, I'm going up to the longer cook, but this is going to be fantastic. I'm getting, oh, I'm down to the bottom here. I think, I think my jar is just about full too. Let's see. I have a little bit of room there. There we go. Less than a couple tablespoons left. Um, so, oh, and there's a skin. I'm gonna take that right out of there. Okay, nice. So I wiped all the rims of the jars. My canner is on the stove with the appropriate amount of liquid. And I, I made a, a really good mess here, but that's what you do when you're canning, right? Um, so I have how many pints? Let me see. I have six pints going in my little 10.5 uh, All-American pressure canner. And um, these are not going to go for that length of time. They are going to go for, let me find it. It is going to go if the quartz... So I'm going to do these um, little bad boys for 35 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure. All right. Quartz, 35. These, 30. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, it's starting to be a long day here. <laughs> All right. We'll be back when I'm pulling them out of the canner. Woohoo! So guys, I am ready to take my jars out of the canners. This one went for 35 minutes. This one went for 40 minutes under 10 pounds of pressure. I let everything come down to zero and then I take the weight off and wait five minutes or so. Undo the thumb screws. And somebody commented on my Facebook post that this did not look even from side to side. It doesn't matter. It really does not matter. I didn't have any trouble getting the lid off. Um, I've done that whole juggling game when I first started with the All American doesn't make a difference. That's why you do the thumb screws across from each other. It levels it out and even if it isn't completely level, the seal is still there. So don't worry about it. You're, you're worried about too much stuff. Okay, so, and then I take, I don't know if you can see, but I take my lid and I let some air in there, okay? And I'm setting this down on my quartz on a wadded up tea towel. So it's not super hot down on my quartz countertop. And then this one, oh yeah, I'm setting it 
right next to it and I've got it down on a um, the one of the canning racks that goes in here if you're gonna double stack so I am super excited oh my water looks nice um, tomatoes are notorious for leaching out um, juice they, they just get hot really fast and they boil and yeah they do their thing and it's okay um, you're gonna have some evacuation during the canning process but we want as little as possible right now everything is super expanded and tomatoes expand I think kind of like pie filling more than other products so I think that's why we get more evacuation of tomato products than we do other things but let me grab <clears throat> I want to grab a paper towel just so I have something just in case it's it's gonna drip I know it's gonna drip so I have a Tatler lid here and I found believe it or not I found that Tatler's look how beautiful that is it's absolutely gorgeous it's still boiling in the jar um, but it's beautiful it's beautiful stewed tomatoes I have found that if you leave these Tatler lids alone, if you just snug them up like you do a regular jar, even though it's not an easy seal, I don't have a problem. <laughs> so I don't, wor I don't generally worry about them too much. If I feel like the ring is loose, then I'll snug them down. But there we go. Oh, beautiful. So we have six pints and seven quarts of stewed tomatoes. And this one had quite a bit of liquid in there, which is fine. I'm excited. Oh, I'm so excited to have this on my shelf. This will definitely get me through the year. Um, you know, I'm I'm here by myself, so uh, it doesn't it doesn't. I don't use a ton of stuff like this, but when I make a nice big pot of chili or you know. Uh, pasta sauce or let's say I'm doing a lasagna I can totally use this or my marinara sauce so there's my 10.5 um, quart canner and uh, now I'm gonna grab my one quart jars Ooh, they're beautiful of stewed tomatoes oh and you could just put this over like green beans or um, you could put this on uh, in, you know, add some macaroni noodles, some of this, some green beans or some okra or, uh, you know, or just turn it up a notch. Okay. So here's some more Tatlers and yeah, everything's way expanded past the headspace that I adjusted for. That's okay. So guys, I hope it inspires you to maybe try your hand at home canning. Try your hand at gardening, container gardening. I'm, I'm raised bed gardening and I have done enough in some small raised bed containers to be able to can enough for myself for a year. So there's no reason, no matter where you are, that you can't grow and possibly put back your own food. and you know what? You know what's on the shelf. I don't have to worry about um, whether Del Monte's got good tomatoes this year. I've got them right on my shelf. All right. <laughs> I'm going to get the rest of these jars out of here. Mm. And be sure and don't tip your jars when they're hot like this. The water will evaporate or you can dab it off. But um, yeah, you don't want to tip your jars because they're still trying to vent until they seal and create that vacuum. But, oh, I'm so excited. These are absolutely beautiful. And I'm very excited that I got this much bounty out of my garden. Well, and I have to say, my, my daughter helped. My daughter's garden helped a little bit too. But I've got tons more coming. I've got at least this much coming up ahead. So if you wanna see another canning video, Please don't hesitate to leave me a comment in the comment section and let me know. And maybe let me know what you'd like to see if you've been following along with my garden vlogs. And coming up soon, I'm gonna do a vlog. I'm gonna start vlogging on my days off because my days off now that I work full time are every bit as busy 
as any day I've ever had. And so I really want to start bringing some of you along. A lot of you have been asking for those again. And so um, I will post that it's a blog in the title. So if you're not into that, just pass it up. All right, guys. Woo! I can't wait. This is, this is so exciting. I love this time of year. And even though I can year round, mm, this is like right now, I have no choice. If I'm going to preserve it, I got to do it. All right, guys. <laughs> we'll see you next time for another canning, preserving, mm, putting it back. Let's do it video.